Small group leader, your goal, one of your primary goals, is to host an effective conversational Bible study. There are just a few things you might want to keep in mind if you're going to make that happen. First of all, be an active listener. Now, you may wonder, what does he mean by being an active listener? A person who is an active listener, when someone else is speaking, is looking into their eyes, is giving some visual that they're listening, and they are actually hearing what the person is saying rather than thinking what their response is going to be. But mostly it is a visual thing. So if someone is answering a question, you're going to be looking at them into their eyes, giving them some sense of, I'm hearing you, so I'm nodding my head. It could be that I'm leaning forward, some kind of posture that says I'm hearing what you're saying, so that they know you're listening to them. Many small group leaders tell me that they don't have a great conversation, a Bible study, and as they're speaking with me, I know why. It looks like they don't care that they're having a conversation. You want to be an active listener. Now, you also want to create a conversational environment. Always do the icebreaker. Don't skip over the icebreaker even when people don't want to do it. Also, be certain you set your chairs in a circle so that people can look into one another's eyes so when someone is speaking, they can be engaging with the person who is sharing a thought and so that they can then easily respond to that thought without feeling awkward. And if you also, um, it's vital that if you're going to create a conversational environment, that you lead the way. Um, when you ask a hard question, maybe you'll want to respond first to that question and then others will probably join in there. You need to realize that there are four stages of communication and that over time, we'll get to that fourth stage. It doesn't happen in the first meeting. Sometimes people move forward faster than others. Some groups move forward faster than others. But just be aware that you can kind of gauge how your group is doing when it comes to uh, vulnerability and authenticity by watching this progression and maybe asking questions that lead to deeper questions. The first stage is small talk. It's kind of how you doing today, how'd your day go, those kinds of things. Just kind of small talk we would say to one another if we passed each other um, in the hallway. The second stage is facts. And here we talk, we just basically share factual information with one another. For instance, if it was sports scores, you know, somebody might say, John, heard the Bengals got crushed. Or, John saw the news today and there's a cold front moving in. We're just talking about things that are happening and sharing facts. Now, when you move further with people and they begin to feel more comfortable that you're going to be willing to hear what their ideas are and their opinions are, we then get into that third phase and that is ideas and opinions. At this point, people will share their ideas and opinions and even defend them in a nice way. Uh, they know that their ideas will not be discounted as they share them. So for instance, uh, you might say to someone, John, I think the Bengals coach is one of the worst coaches in the league. Realizing there may be pushback and you might have a real good conversation about why we differ on that. Or maybe someone would say when it comes to the weather, instead of saying, you know, good weather today. When you move to this phase, someone might literally say, I don't believe in all that global warming stuff. Uh, realizing it might lead to a further conversation. Now, realize uh, levels of trust are moving forward each time also. So I'm beginning to trust you at this first level that you didn't push back on me uh, in a way that was unkind uh, early on. So then I moved to stage two, feeling it's comfortable to discuss these things. Then stage three, I can share an opinion with this person. And even if we disagree, our relationship is not going to be tainted. And then when we really get to a place we need to be, we're talking feelings. So we might say to John, John, I've had a rough week. I've been feeling downright miserable. We get to share what our heart is sensing, not just what our mind is thinking at this point. It is at this place that people are realizing that this is a safe haven for me to talk about real life issues. And it is in this spot where people begin to share real prayer concerns, uh, prayer concerns that will guide them toward hope and help and uh, know that they will be loved no matter what. Now, small group leader, realize this. When it comes to having a kind of conversation that you want, you are the model. Model what you want group members to do. If you want them to speak ideas and opinions, then that's what you're gonna model. So you need to do a real good inner search of yourself and ask yourself this question. Am I a person who only talks at that level? Is that kind of where I'm comfortable? Because if that's where you're willing to go, that's the level that your group members will go. If you want them to share their feelings, you must model that you're gonna to have to talk about your own feelings and your own journey, even your own mistakes and mishaps. When you do that, your group members will do that, which allows then for transformation to take place because feelings come from the heart. And the heart is where transformation truly takes place. We wanna be knowing what's going on in the heart, 
people revealing what's going on in the heart so that we can then move them toward heart transformation. And remember this, the goal of a conversational Bible study is not to have a good conversation. Let me say that again. Way too many small group leaders walk out of a group meeting thinking, man, that was fantastic, when the truth was God's Word was not the centerpiece of the conversation. The goal of a small group conversation, a conversational Bible study, a conversation that transforms is to first realize that when we're together, we're wanting to hear from God and we hear from God through His Word. So you just can't let everybody's opinion on what a passage means be the bottom line. What I like to tell small group leaders is this, lots of ideas can circle the runway. But the responsibility of the small group leader is to make sure that the truth of God's Word lands. If you'll keep these things in mind, I think your small group meetings will not only be effective, they'll be transformational. Thanks a lot.